Welcome back to the lab. I want to kick this off by saying that this video was supposed to be easy. This video was supposed to be a walk in the park, literally show up, ramble for a minute, done. This video might have even never needed to happen, and I truly mean that. Like, this is the type of design decision where I can just do it and tell you what I did and move on with life. But that is not what's going to happen because y'all made my job really hard. Today, we're talking about microcontroller selection. Let's pick the brain that will control this electronic load. We mentioned the Arduino Nano footprint. Uh, it's small, it's all right. The micro isn't anything special. In fact, it's probably not good enough, but the footprint ought to work. Like, yeah, it's a place where we can start for prototyping. Then there's the PSOC 4 environment from Cypress and well, it's not just PSOC 4, it's all of them, right? It's PSOC 6, PSOC 5 LP, PSOC 4. I've actually used a fair bit of these, almost half, and I'm pretty excited about that. But they've got a lot of great products at Cypress, and the code ports well from one to the next, and their hardware abstraction is good, so we could do that. But then there's the STM32 series from... Um, uh, ST Micro, of course, it's almost in the name. But uh, yeah, yeah, they've got a lot of micros there from low power to high performance. A lot of great options. Now you had ST Micro into the mix with the STM32 series. A lot of great options there. But they've got eight or so high performance lines that really kind of make sense. And their, their mainstream high performance, the low power might not cut it. But let's be honest, STM32 left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. Then, of course, TI has some good micros. like them a lot. Their Tiva C series and their MSP430 and their MSP432 lines of parts, they're both great. I'm not a huge fan of Code Composer Studio, if I'm being completely honest, but they've also got their Energia development environment that's also not great, but at least it's simple. I don't know. I, I, I love their parts. I'm not a huge fan of the IDE. Either way, we can make it work. Then, of course, this is where you made my life a little more difficult because I was set on something simple, something easy, something with a lot of libraries, something where the hardware abstraction was good, something that we've done before, something comfortable. And then, thank you, thank you so much. One of our lovely viewers, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Go Gotek, Gotek. Tech, I go go tech. I'm gonna say go tech. Thank you for the fantastic tip in the comments. And their suggestion was the PIC 16F 1619, which they recommended. Why did they recommend this part? Well, it's because it's got a dedicated PID accelerator, has a freely available dev board, the DM16 DM164137. And it's pretty cheap, the dev board and the micro, it's pretty cheap. It's an 8-bit part with some pretty advanced math features, which I think is great. Couple problems here though, uh, it doesn't have enough IO and we need a spy bus and I squared C at the same time. And this only has one serial communication block. So that's gonna be a showstopper for us unless it's got a big brother. Uh, but, but this is the big brother. All the other parts are smaller. So I'm not sure that we'll have enough pins to drive everything. I'm not convinced we'll have enough serial blocks because now that I think about it, we've actually got UART, SPY, and I squared C going at the same time. I think that in itself would use up all the IO. <laughs> so, yep, uh, it's a great device. I can't wait to find an excuse to use it in a future project, but yeah. Uh, as long as I was thinking about microchip, I dove in a little bit, looked at some of their other offerings, and I've got to say, I was a little overwhelmed. Like, I was a little overwhelmed by the number of options there are to choose from in microchip's lineup. See, because they acquired Atmel a while back, so that means they've got the Atmel SAM series, that means they've got the Atmega, the AT Tiny, and the, uh, what, uh, the, what's the regular one? Like the Arduino Uno. I think that's Atmega. I mean, yeah, whatever, whatever. So they've got all that. Then they've got their pick lines, their 8, 16, and 32-bit pick lines, and then they've got 
all the modern stuff that they've been developing on both sides. And I'm just looking at this ecosystem like, what? <laughs> what what processors have you developed in the last 20 years? Which of these are ancient? I Like, I just, I couldn't, I don't know, maybe it's their website, maybe it's the way they sort it, maybe it's their branding, I don't know. But, like, there is just, it seemed like there were thousands of options, and I couldn't clearly differentiate which groups of components had what features. And I was like, I was just like, okay, we're going to take a step away from microchip and maybe come back to you in a little bit. Maybe we'll come back in a little bit. Another viewer suggestion comes from Greg Dunn Technical. And thank you, Greg. Thanks for the tip. You are also awesome. He says, have you seen the Teensy microcontroller boards? No, I hadn't. Well, I kind of knew about them, but never really thought about using one. And you made me go over and crack open the uh, the data sheet for uh, some of these things from PJRC and specifically the Teensy 3.6 looks awesome. This board has me rethinking the entire architecture for the electronic load. Why? Well, it's a cheap ARM micro with a floating point unit for math acceleration. It has a DAC and ADC built in. And if we just threw this whole thing up on the high voltage side of the design, all we need to translate back down is a UART and I squared C. So the user interface and a UART. That's a little tempting, but there's more to this architecture than this prototype. This is the first prototype of an electronic load. This is not meant to be the final state of the design. And there's some other things that having a spy DAC and a spy ADC will buy us in the long run. If we threw this device on the high voltage side, yes, we could remove a lot of stuff. We could remove a DAC, two external ADCs, and that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty fantastic, but it would come at a cost. As we want to scale this architecture up, perhaps it might be beneficial to have one central micro and then just break out your spy bus with a bunch of chip selects to three or four power stages. Maybe we can run our spy bus fast enough or run two spy buses that we can control a lot of these power stages in parallel at the cost of three or four dollars of a digital isolator and a uh, couple spy analog devices. Perhaps there'll come a day where that is possible. But if we have a micro, now we're talking about coordinating code between a bunch of microcontrollers and handling faults and handshaking, and then you got to worry about corruption and there's all kinds of complication that would come from having a full micro up in that region. Not to mention getting clean enough power to run an advanced micro and putting that near something like a 10 amp, 100 volt electronic load stage is, is kind of tricky. So I need to think about it because it might still be the right move, even if it is complicated. But thank you for the suggestion because I'm thinking about this. This might help the design a lot. Regardless of which way it ends up, it's good to think about it, consider it, and then make a decision, right? So thank you. This is an awesome board. Uh, as long as I'm rambling um, and thinking about this, so the dedicated analog hardware would allow for even using something like an FPGA. So if we had a little FPGA daughter card, we could put some pretty cool high-speed sampling like dedicated spy bus for every single part and just yeah that would be pretty cool that would be pretty cool run our control loops in hardware with uh the adc's and dax on the high voltage side that'd be cool that'd be cool anyways that's uh just another reason for using a dedicated footprint okay you put an fpga down put a micro down put whatever you want on that board if you can't tell, I'm kind of spinning in circles, so I'm going to try to bring this back together. And the critical thing that I want to leave this video on is, what does that mean for our project? What does that mean for our electronic load? I just walked through a lot of microcontrollers that we could use. Honestly, we could probably use every single one of these microcontrollers to build this design. Every single one. We could even use the pick with low part layer low pin count, and we could find a way to do it. We could. Just some paths will be easier than others. I'm a little more confused than when I sat down to make this video. Like, 
when I sat down, I was pretty confident I was going to say, we're going to start with an Arduino, and if we need more power, we'll, we'll move to a PSOC. That was what I was going to do. I was going to say, Arduino for now, PSOC if we need more power. But what you've revealed to me is that it is a big, big world of microcontrollers out there, and perhaps it could be fun to walk through learning another IDE with you. Perhaps exploring another ecosystem and learning exactly how easy or difficult it is to develop on another platform might be good for us. So, might need to give that a try. Here's what we're going to do. Because we've got a big decision to make, and I feel like I'm missing a critical piece of information. I don't know how much performance we really need. I can guess that we're probably going to want a floating point unit, but a fast enough processor could probably just brute force its way through it. How fast is fast enough? I don't know. I know that one spy bus will probably be fast enough to sample everything we need to sample and run our control loop. But how fast is fast enough? How fast of a sample time is going to be required? I don't know. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to launch into prototyping with the SPY DAC and the SPY ADC. Why? Because we can set up the framework. We can tee this up, get some basic software that reads and writes data to these peripherals to determine how fast we can actually sample the things, how fast we can control the things. That'll be really good. We'll add in some software PID, see how that impacts performance, see how it starts to slog down, look at our loop time, and make sure that we can process the data fast enough. And based on whatever micro we develop this on, based on how slow it's running that logic or how quickly it can run it, that will kind of give us a baseline, right? That will give us a baseline of what performance gives us what amount of control loop ticks per second. And if it's not enough, control loop ticks per second will scale up to something more complicated, more expensive. And if it's sufficient, we'll leave it where it is. And that's kind of where, that's kind of where my head is. This will reveal, this type of prototyping will reveal what type of hardware peripherals we need for math acceleration, what type of clock speed we're looking at, 32-bit, 16, 8, where we're going to we're gonna land, what we're going to need. In other words, my decision is to not decide today. My decision is to do some breadboarding, learn what we can learn through rough prototyping on a breadboard, and then push this design to where it needs to go from there. Do we need an integrated DAC and ADC? Maybe. Do we need 32-bit processor? Maybe. Do we need an integrated USB serial peripheral? Maybe. <laughs> but I don't know right now. So until I do, we're going to need to put this on pause. Uh, just want to say, before we close this out, our original micro, this one that we're going to use for the breadboard, will not be used in the final design. I'm going to make that promise to you. I know how development normally goes. I know that once you get locked into a micro, you usually leave it because it's painful to port your code, but I have no intention of using my rough prototyping selection in the final design. I have every intention of writing portable software that will run on any microcontroller after minor revision. We did that for the UPS P2. We did, it worked, it was good. We're gonna do that again. Now I'm just starting to feel rude. Right? I've been a tease for two videos in a row. First, we start talking about control loops, and I don't teach you about everything there is. Now I'm talking about micros, and I'm not even making a component selection. I'm the worst. But that's kind of where my head's at. Thank you so much for your suggestions. Thank you for derailing this video and pushing me in a direction that is less comfortable where we are apt to learn more than we would have otherwise. Thank you. As always, if you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by hitting that like button, getting subscribed, or leaving a comment down below. Coming up soon, we'll be jumping into some prototyping and connecting some of these peripherals. I can't wait. The DAC and ADC are up first. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out our Patreon page linked in the description. That really helps us out a lot, so thank you. Yes, thank you to everyone who's decided to become a patron member because that really helps to keep this all possible. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching Eve for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!